Hello, and welcome into the next verse. My name is George. Hey, if this is your first time here, or you've been here before but have not subscribed yet, please do so, along with hitting that thumbs up button for me and dropping your comments, want to hear your thoughts and feelings about anything I may say or anything you're thinking about in terms of the Knicks or whatever. You can ask life questions. I don't care. I don't care. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good because, as you can see right down below, Knicks took care of business. They really took care of business, but they let it get a little close. They let the Wizards get within five points in that fourth quarter. Can you believe that? Ended up pulling away. Beautiful. They won at 120-99, which we, it's important. The points... The margin of victory is very important in the in-season tournament. This was the first victory for the Knicks in the in-season tournament after losing a close one to the Bucks in Milwaukee. They lost it by five points there. So now I think they're like a plus uh, 16, I believe, in total. And that's going to matter. It's going to matter. And they play the Miami Heat, I believe, a week from today. So that's going to be a big game, but that's going to be at the Garden. But they play another game tomorrow with the Charlotte Hornets. That's right. So it's going to be a back-to-back. -back. Uh, R.J. Barrett did not play. Quentin Grimes did not play. Uh, they nursed it. And guess who started? Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart started in, in place of Grimes and R.J. And it all worked out. It all worked out. I think uh, I, it was. I'm fine with them starting over Emmanuel Quickly. The interesting thing is Emmanuel Quickly ended up becoming the co-star of this game. Jalen Brunson was absolutely outstanding. Let's get to it, people. Here it is, 121.99. Uh, Look at that. Jalen Brunson, 32 points, seven rebounds, seven assists. I have highlights for you guys, so we're going to get into that. Uh, but first, just got to shout this guy out. He was, he was fantastic from the three-point line. He continues to amaze from the th behind the arc. Uh, for the entire game, he shot... Uh, six of 10, 60% overall, over 60% overall. In fact, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about where the Knicks are right now the t as a team. But before we get to that, let me show you the next uh, star of this game. Manuel quickly, 27 points on 10 of 18 field goals and six rebounds and four dimes. Three of seven from the three-point line. Hit a very key three-pointer at one point, once again, like he did the previous game. Fabulous. Uh, this time, I think it was off the dribble at this time. But let me just show you, tell you something here. What's happening here? Right now, the New York Knicks as a team, New York Knicks as a team are 28th in the NBA in field goal percentage. 28th, almost at the bottom. But they are now 8th in three-point shooting overall for the entire season, all 12 games. The Knicks are now 7-5 and five now. 37.6%. They're shooting 37.6% from the three-point line. And in fact, uh, that's for the whole season. But in the last six games, in the last six games, which the Knicks have won five of them, they only dropped that one game to the Celtics, which was, you know, disappointing. And But RJ wasn't in that game. In the last six games, the New York Knicks are 5-1, and one, and they are now 12th in field goal percentage with a 47.7% overall. This is the entire NBA, 12 in field goal percentage. So they're trending in a lethal direction right now because they're 28th overall for the whole season. So you can see that they're trending upward. They, I mean, they're, it's already almost a 4% jump from what they're averaging for the season. But in three-point shooting, get ready. They are the number one three-point shooting team in the NBA in the last six games. <laughs> That's right. They're shooting 43.1% as a team. 43.1% as a team. And let me get into that a little more. A little more. You ready? Here we go. In those last six games, the Knicks have six players. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, five players shooting 40% or, or better, including... R.J. Barrett shooting 57.9%, but he only played three games of that six-game stretch. But we want, we're 3-0 in those. Uh, Jalen Brunson is at least an scintillating 54.8% from the three-point line. That's crazy numbers. Emmanuel quickly is shooting 46.9% from the three-point line. Quinton Grimes is shooting 44.4%. And 
Miles Duke, Deuce McBride is shooting 40%. <laughs> but he did. He's played five five of those games. Uh, you know, only played average about five minutes or whatever. But still, it's good to see those those. It's good to see those balls go through the net, especially for someone off the bench who doesn't get that much burn. So shout out to Miles as well. Now Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, he's averaging 35.7%, and Josh Hart uh, and uh, Julius Randle are bringing up the rear in the last six games in terms of the three-point shooting, 35% for uh, Josh Hart and 33.3% for Randle. So that's the last six games. Outstanding. So that means the trend is going in the right direction. Are the Knicks going to, by the end of the season, are they going to be, remain the top three-point shooting team in the NBA? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I got to say, anything can happen because if you think about it, Dante DiVincenzo is one of their best three-point shooters, and he's not uh, even – he's below his season average here. Now, everybody else is above their season average. So everything's going to level out. But I think this team, this squad is going to be a above-average three-point shooting team by the end of this season. If they maintain there, that's fabulous because we know – we know that inside the arc, around the paint, guys like Julius Randle are, have been underperforming. Jalen Brunson is underperforming inside the arc. Those guys are going, and they're the, the heavy usage guys, they're the ones that put up the most shots. Those, those percentage, the field goal percentage for those two is going to rise. This is going to be a very interesting team offensively. Now, the Wizards are not a good team. They're not a good defensive team, but they can shoot. They can definitely put up points on the board. And uh, which at one point they got, they made it, they made it close, they made it scary. Let's get to the highlights. Here we go. So the Knicks got off to a great start. Uh, they were already ahead 16 4, but then they gave up a three pointer right there. Now, Dante DiVincenzo in the first quarter, he struggled a bit in the first quarter. And Julius Randle played the entire first quarter, five of nine. Five of nine. Beautiful. He got the Knicks off to a great start in that quarter. He gave 11 points, and so did Brunson match that 11 points. He was 4 of 9 from the th uh, overall, but he was 3 of 3 from the three-point line. Beautiful. The Knicks shot 6 of 12 in that first quarter uh, from the three-point line. They shot uh, 14 of 29 overall and uh, picked up 16 rebounds, 7 dimes in that first quarter for this team. That's really good. That's really good. And only committed 2 turnovers. Only committed two turnovers. They got they they got off to a great start. Uh, that first quarter they were up 35 to 25, 10 point lead though. But they had built up a bigger lead, so they let the Wizards kind of like claw themselves back in this game. Uh, and they had kind of pretty well rounded scoring. Gallinari had five. Uh, Kuzma had five. Uh, uh, Denny Advia had four. This is all in that first quarter. But something else happened in the first quarter. That's right, Evan Fournier got his first floor time of the season. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Uh, and uh, it was good to see him out there. You know, I mean, he made this one pass. It was terrible, but it it, it resulted in points, which is excellent. Uh, okay, so here we go into the second quarter. Look at Deuce. Look at Deuce just being a menace. Being a menace. This is excellent. Look at this little dish pass there. Beautiful to Josh Hart. Uh, Josh Hart made uh, two of two in that quarter. And Dante, the, the Nova boys, uh, other than Brunson, did not miss a bucket in the second quarter. They uh, Dante even just hit three three pointers in a row in that third in that second quarter, which were key. And the Knicks, uh, you know, that, that's they scored 20, 30 points, but they gave up twenty nine to the uh, Wizards. There, they allowed the Wizards to think they could really get back in this game. I think the Knicks were up uh, eleven at the half. Nice little floater. Nice little mini floater for Miles. Deuce. Oh, this was... Ah. Gallinari, man. Gallinari, uh, it's interesting. He's an interesting player. I always remember him when he was a Nick. Uh, so as they went to the second half... Wow, they're showing every single play here. <laughs> uh, let me look ahead here. One thing that was really interesting was... The passing continued in that second quarter. The Knicks, uh, they were they had seven uh, assists in the first quarter. The second quarter, they had nine. So they already had, by the half, probably, you know, sometimes more than they, they had in games all last year. They had 16 assists by that point. This was a nice little oh, dump-off pass. Julius is doing that a lot more now. And I'm really, I think that's a key, key thing for him to keep developing. 
to create some kind of like uh, com some kind of chemistry with Mitch because we know that Jalen Brunson struggles getting the ball to Mitch. He doesn't do the Gotham lob uh, rarely ever see. I can't even remember the last time I saw it. Uh, he, I mean, he's a good passer. He just, you know, for some reason he struggles uh, getting the ball to Mitch in places where he can score and be lethal. Now, as you can see here in the third quarter, the Knicks uh, stagnated a bit and uh, they allowed the Wizards to think that they could get back in this game. And uh, the Wizards outscored the Knicks by six in that third quarter. So uh, it, there was only a five-point lead going into the fourth. And uh, you can see here right now, the Knicks built it up to 10 again. But uh, Kyle Kuzma connects with the three from the right corner. And then they chopped, yeah, the lead chopped to seven. Nice little play here. Look at that. Nice. That was one of the few mid-range shots that uh, Brunson connected on. That's one thing that I'm still a little concerned about. His uh, floater game, his mid-range game, his uh, finishing at the rim game this season, he's been struggling. I mean, even in this game, that mean he was only 4 of 13 from inside the arc. Only 4 of 13. Not good. That's less than 33%. Ah, that was a killer right there with a less with about a minute left. So here, as the close at the close of the third quarter, this was a total brain fart between uh, quickly and uh, Julius. But just the way they just stare at each other, like you know, there's there's still moments of regression there. Now comes Emmanuel quickly time. This is where he takes over the game. Beautiful drive. Oh, love lovely finish there. I think he scored. Well, he scored in the fourth quarter. I think he scored 16 points in that fourth quarter. Yes, he was six of eight. Look at a nice little left-handed uh, layup right there. Six of eight overall. He scored 16 points, uh, two rebounds, one assist himself. Excellent play for Emmanuel quickly. He was the main reason that we were able to take control of that lead again because we never gave up the lead. But look, it was still close with nine minutes left. And then Brunson, boom. He hits a uh, second of his one of his four uh, inside the arc shots. We miss here. But, again, the offensive rebounding game. The New York Knicks get so many second-chance points, and then Julius gets another chance. Beautiful. Connects there. And they start building the lead. Now it's a 10. Here comes Brunson. Here comes Brunson. We got quickly in the corner. But now Brunson at the top. Boom. That's like a good, what, 29-footer, 28-footer. And now Julius right here. This is beautiful, beautiful connection right there between the two of them. That's great chemistry right there. And it's great because, you know, uh, quickly, his mom was in the audience. I think he had like 50 uh, friends and relatives there. That was a difficult shot. Look at him. You know, you know he's cooking when he can make shots like that. Here he comes right here. Boom. A little step back. Jab, step back. Boom, boom. He catches the friendly front of the rim. Drops in. Beautiful. They start building up now. It's a 20-point lead with about a minute, 25 seconds left. And then he's like, oh, you know what? Let's do a heat check. Nice. Nice. I, you know, you guys know if you watch me. Uh, you know, uh, Emmanuel Quickly is uh, one of my favorite Knicks, and we cannot, <laughs> we cannot let him go. We cannot let him go. There's just no way. He is too valuable. He just, you just can't. Re you, it's difficult to replace a guy like that on your team, who at any moment, when you're even, even, even when your top players are are doing well, and you still need more scoring, he comes through like that. That was awesome. All right. All right, uh, man, this is exciting. Let's get deeper into the stats here. Uh, so as I mentioned before, uh, Julius, uh, he had a very productive game, shot 50% from the field, uh, 9 of 18. That three-point shot wasn't quite there for him tonight, uh, 22, uh, 22 points overall, but seven rebounds, eight assists. Second game, second game in a row for Julius Randle with eight assists. That is the big difference between him and and the all NBA years. Yes, he distributed the ball in those years, but a lot of that came off of, you know, just busted plays, just he couldn't quite get to the rim, and it was just like last second, last second uh, looks to try and find somebody out on the perimeter. This time, he's looking earlier. He's making the decisions earlier of when to give up the ball, and now the assists are rising. Beautiful. 22 points for him. Mitch, I mentioned that he only ended up with eight rebounds, but played 27 minutes. Uh, he Mitch got one assist, six points, 32 points for uh, Brunson. Fabulous. Josh Hart, not a exciting stat line, nine points, but he was all over the floor 
uh, diving, he was causing chaos, uh, blocking people from behind. I think you got one block, uh, right? Uh, yes, you got two blocks, actually. Oh, awesome. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo finished with 14 points overall, shot five of nine. Uh, he finished. He actually finished his one shot inside the arc because that's another thing that I've been concerned about. All I think the I think the Knicks are going to increase their efficiency as they uh, in the mid range area and closer to the rim as the as the games go on. And most of that comes from Brunson and Randall. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. He was. He was really good with that second unit, uh, eight boards, uh, two assists uh, for him. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, then I show you. Uh, Manu quickly, right there. So proud of this team. Uh, RJ was there on the bench. It was a game time decision. Uh, this is what uh, Thibs said here. Uh, da, da, da. I'm gonna pull this up for you guys because uh, it's interesting. So Thibs said, "Look." He was very sick. That's all I'll say. And if he's not ready, he's not ready. You trust the medical people. You trust him and you go from there. He warmed up. He said he wasn't quite there. We'll see where he is tomorrow. But each day has been a lot better. So there's hope that uh, I kind of had a feeling that RJ wouldn't play tonight with the two, with a back-to-back. -back. You know, he's had a couple of games off. Migraines are, they, they do, they wear you down. They drain you of energy. So, for him, if he played tonight, he forced himself to play tonight, then he probably wouldn't play tomorrow. So this was, the, I think, the easier game. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets uh, with Miles Bridges returning, you know, they can uh, they can be dangerous uh, at times. Uh, and the Knicks kind of have the Wizards uh, figured out. So I think it was the right move. Let's hope though that he does. He is well enough to play tomorrow because we need him back out on the court, man. This guy was having a beautiful breakout season. You know, it's, it's been on pause. I want to keep seeing that. I want to keep talking about that. I love it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he said fatigued. All right, what was the other thing I want to talk about? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, so Jalen Brunson had a jump ball situation, and he won it. And Fred Katz uh, tweeted this out, Jalen Brunson on winning a jump ball tonight. I was pretty excited. And then Kuz looked at me and said, it's Corey Kispert. Don't worry about it. So he put me back in my place. A smiling Julius Randle on Brunson's jump ball win. It was a fluke. So they're having fun. These guys are having fun. They're enjoying playing together. It's it's a joy to watch the team. Sometimes it gets a little, it gets a little painful because they let teams stick around that they shouldn't. And uh, what's going on here? There we go. Uh, this is what I wanted to look at the summary over here. What is going on? Oh, that's what's going on. My keyboard. I'm stuck here. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is the game chart? Here it is. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Several times they let the lead dwindle down to five points. Yeah. But they never gave the lead up. And psychologically, that's really important. Once you let a team tie you, then you start, you know, you start sweating, the panic, and the other team starts believing even more in themselves. The Knicks were able to keep putting out those little fires as they went along. And then, as you see, Emmanuel quickly was the ultimate fireman and just shut them down, drained them of anything they had they could do. It was awesome. In fact, I think uh, the Wizards went uh, for about almost a five-minute stretch, four-and-a-half-minute stretch without scoring a point in that fourth quarter. Ain't going to win much. Ain't going to win much. Uh, that's what's going to happen. Uh, the Knicks... Uh, Destroyed the Wizards 17-9 uh, in second chance points. And uh, what was the other area? Turnovers. The Knicks only committed 10 turnovers. Beautiful. Because uh, Kuzma was the high scorer for the Wizards. 19 for him. Uh, 18 for Denny Avdia. 7 of 11. Denny's a good player. He's an interesting player. You know, it's going to the, – the defense for them is, is just going to be a big problem, especially when you have a guy like Jordan Poole on this team. Uh, I, I don't know what the deal is with him, but 2 of 11 – 29 points, uh, I mean, uh, 29 minutes, eight points in 29 minutes. That's terrible. He's he's your big guy, big acquisition, big money guy. I'm so glad, so happy he's not on the Knicks. That's the exact kind of player we don't want. I know it worked for Golden State that year that they won. They needed it, but uh, they got rid of him as soon as they possibly could, and that was a wise move. Even though Draymond Green has completely lost his mind, I can't believe he choked Rudy Gobert like that. I mean, that was fucking ridiculous. That was fucking ridiculous. And I defend Draymond all the time. That, uh, just indefensible. That was, I mean, beyond stupid. 
is beyond stupid. So I don't know what's going to happen there. He got he got fined five, uh, suspended five games. I think that was a little light. They should have been a little harsher on him. This is just getting way, way out of hand. Keep going here. Uh, here are the uh, team stats. Yeah, the Knicks shot almost 50% from the field. 49.5%, 42.1% from the three-point line. So they shot... They actually... They actually shot uh, worse from the three-point line than they've been averaging for the past six games. That's how great they've been shooting from the three-point line. But free throw line, just disturbing. Uh, I think Julius missed a few. 14 of 20. 70%, 70% is bad. Bad. This team should be in the high 70s. You know, 78 in that in that realm. Because look at look at Washington. They hit they went to this charity stripe 16 times. They connected on 15. 93.8%, and that helps. All that helps keep, keep them around. So let's hope that the Knicks can start. Uh, they got to practice those free throws. I don't know what they do in those off the off days. In-season tournament. Here's the standings. So the Knicks are right now in third behind Miami and Milwaukee. They lost to Milwaukee by five points, and I keep bringing that up because the points differential is the tiebreaker. They only play four games, so you're going to need many different tiebreaker situations. So tomorrow we play Charlotte. And I think that, wait, that is a in-season tournament game, correct? Uh, I just want to confirm that. Because that would be weird if it's not. Uh, let me see here. I don't know why they make things so difficult to find. Just put it up there. Oh, it's not an in-season game. So... I mean, uh, an in-season tournament game. So we play the Hornets again? Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, the Knicks' chances are decent because if we beat Miami, then they'll be 2-1, and one, same as Miami. And if we beat them by, you know, more than, uh, well, if we beat them, the Knicks will be in second place here. Uh, but then they have to win that fourth game against Charlotte, whenever that is. I believe that's going to be next Wednesday or is Thursday the no it's uh it's gonna be next Tuesday no it's not God, these schedules are just annoying but Monday is a big game against the Timberwolves Timberwolves are eight and three right now it would be and it's in Minnesota if the Knicks could go there with a nice healthy RJ maybe get even Quentin Grimes back uh Grimes was sitting on the bench he had a little uh not a, quite a cast, but the brace on his hand. Uh, hopefully, because we, we need we need everybody. We need everybody for that game, especially a Grimes to handle def, uh, Anthony Edwards defensively. Let's hope that he can make it back out there. All right. This was a fun game, mostly, to watch. Uh, the result is fabulous. Uh, I hope that the Knicks can repeat this kind of performance tomorrow against the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, I will be doing a, a post game uh, for that game as well. Gonna Maybe I can do a, a, a live stream. Uh, might be might do a live stream. Gonna try, gonna try. So stay tuned. Again, my name is George. Uh, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button for me and follow me on Twitter, share this video, drop your comments, uh, everything, everything. Join the Knicksverse. All right, thank you so much for watching this. I will see you around the next bird.